Howdy again. Thanks for stopping by. This tutorial is going to discuss the basics of report design. Rather than create a new report from scratch, we're going to go ahead and modify an existing report. This will at least give us a look at the underpinnings of the report and how things work and the various pieces and parts of a report. Before we get started, let's have an understanding of where Wirecad has placed the reports. By default, Wirecad is going to put the reports in the reports support path at C colon users public documents Wirecad Wirecad 8 reports. Now, if you're working in a multi user system, your administrators may have retooled this report location to be some kind of network share. The main idea here that I'm trying to convey is that we need to understand where those reports are so that we know where to get them. We need to also understand that in Wirecad the report file has the extension REPX. Okay, so now that we understand where the reports are, let's take a look around the report designer. I've opened a report and we know how to do that now from previous tutorials and I've switched to the report designer tab page. Let's identify the major components of the report designer. This area here is the design canvas. Over here we have the property grid. It is currently paged together with the report explorer. We have the field list here. We have the standard controls toolbox here. Down towards the bottom of the page we have grouping and sorting. The report designer itself is referred to as a banded report designer. Each one of these items here in the design canvas is called a band and a band can repeat any number of times for the report. In this case the report header band will repeat once per report. It's going to run and render whatever is in this canvas area here only once per report. This band here is called the page header band and it renders once per page. The detail band is where we'll go get the data from our data source and we'll render that data once per record. Then we have a page footer band once per page and ultimately we could insert a report footer band. We can also through the process of creating grouping in Wirecad, we can create group bands as well. Now the designer can be zoomed and panned. Here we've got the scroll bar for panning side to side, but we can also zoom in and out using the zoom commands. There is a design element that is part of the report designer that is pretty slick and that is that if you select any given item it may display a smart tag. If you click on the smart tag you'll get properties that are specific to that entity. Now these properties are also mirrored over in the property grid but this gives you a more focused view of properties that might be of real interest to that particular selected entity. So all entities will display a smart tag. Whether or not you make use of it, that's up to you. You'll notice that some of these items are displayed with a pink background right now. That's the designer telling us that we have an export warning. The export warnings are, in, are indicators that say if you're coming out to some other format other than that of the native rendering of this report engine, that there may be some issues. For example, HTML doesn't like to overlap elements. So these types of warnings are going to appear to show you that, hey, it's not going to render like this in every export format. To turn off the export warnings, we go into the property window, report specific properties, and under design, we expand the designer options. Here we can turn off 
export warnings. Now, how do we get an element on the page? Well, pick an element from the toolbox, let's say a label, and drag it onto the page someplace. Now this will just be a static text label and I can put whatever information I want in that. When I print preview you can see the report renders that information there. If I want to put a bound label or a label that is bound to a field in the database I can go to the field list. In this case I'll expand the cables collection because it's a report about cables. I'll get the cable number field and I'll put that there. I'll drag this grip down a little bit so I get room in the detail and then again I will print preview. There's my cable number that I had inserted there. If you, Let's say that I want to concatenate two fields together into a label. I'm going to go ahead and drag an unbound label onto my report canvas and replace the string literal label with my field name. So I'll just use the square braces, cable no, and then I'll put some space in here and maybe a dash, and then I'll use the source sys field name, again in square braces, and you'll notice when I click out that the field names are filled in and they're fixed with regard to their title casing here. All right, so now when I print preview, I have my cable number, dash, and the source sys name. There is only one data source available to the Wirecad report designer. That data source has the entire data collection available to the current project and the global equipment database. If I'd like to put the project name on the report, I can open the project info collection and find the project name field. And then I'll drag that out and I'll put that at the report header band. And maybe give me some room there. Then I'll print preview that and you can see there's my project name for this particular project. All right. Now, my recommendation to you is to start with a report that is close to what you want to finish with and do a file save as into a new name and edit that information. For more information about report design, check out some of the other tutorials. Okay, so that's a quick look at report design in Wirecad. Hopefully that answered some questions for you and made your job a little bit easier. Remember, you can always download Wirecad from Wirecad.com and give it a spin. If you get stuck, give us a call or shoot us an email. We're here to help you with your design endeavor. Thanks for watching.